2003, paper one, circle question for number 11 and then a log to follow at number 12. More substantial looking circle question here. Three touching circles, <coughs> all relative to the axis, centres in the axis or tangents to the axis. It says the circle centre A has got this equation. State the coordinates of A, that'll be easy, and then the length of the line OA. Well, that's just the distance between two points. So, first of all, centre. So we'll just say A is, again, it'd just be the opposite of these, 12 along, 5 down. And then the distance, the length of OA. Well, that's quite easy, actually. You don't really need to do your Pythagoras because you know this. Just indicating the diagram. Now, that's 12 along and 5 down. Then that is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So I could just say it, state it straight off. OA is 13, but I'll give the reason beside it because I've got a 5, 12, 13 triangle. If you didn't know it was a 5, 12, 13 triangle, you would just have to do your Pythagoras. OA squared is 12 squared plus 5 squared, blah, blah, blah. Learn your triangles. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, very common and higher. 2. Hence find the equation of the circle with centre B. Well, the whole thing's symmetrical. If it's 12 units to A, it'll be another 12 units to B, which means the centre of B will have to be, and it's only for many of those three marks though, it's another 12. So I'll show the working then, so I'll do it this way. 2 times 12, but then it's on the axis, so it's 0, which means the centre's going to be 24, 0. That's the first part. The second part will be this. Now, these two circles it said were congruent. Congruent means identical in size and shape to each other. So that means the radius of B will be the same as the radius of this first circle. And you get the radius from the distance between the centres. If these two centres, if these two circles are touching, then the sum of the radii must come to 13. So I'll go back to the first one. The radius, I'll just say A, is the square root of that, is 5. Which means that the radius of, and I'll just call that B, must be the distance, because it'll be the same distance here as well, that'll also be 13, will be 13 minus 5, which means the radius of B is going to be 8. Put them together to get this equation. So you've got x minus a squared, y minus b squared equals r squared, so that's going to be x minus 24 squared plus y, ooh, no, I've done it now, equals 8 squared. No matter, I'll just write one more line. So that means I've got x minus 24 squared plus y squared equals 64. Now the second part, the equation of this parabola passing through the centres of these three circles, it says, can be written in the form of, put it down here, p x x plus q. And that's always going to be the case. If you've got a parabola passing through a couple of points, say it was negative 1 and that was 4, well, let's take this down at <coughs> 8 for instance, then you could have arrived at that from its original equation by factorising it, equating the factors to 0 and extracting the roots. So you can reverse that process. If it passes through negative 1 and 4, the factors must have been x plus 1, x minus 4, that were equal to 0. But there might have been, there might have been a common factor. So you get the equation y equals k times that. And then you can find that k by putting this point 0, 8 into it. 8 would be k times, and then that would just be 1, because it's 0, and that would just be negative 4, and that would give you negative 4k, so k would be negative 2. So your equation would be negative 2, bracket, bracket. Well, it would be the same here. It passes through the points 0 and 24, so the brackets would be x minus 0, which is just x, and x minus 24. So we'd have y equals p times x, as in x minus 0, and x minus 24. And then to find that constant, I need another point somewhere. There's no point using the 24 or the 0. Put them out, knocks out that side, p disappears down the plug all with them. No, we need some point not on the x-axis. This will do nicely. The point a. That says if x is, ne eh, sorry, is 12, if x is 12, then y should be negative. 5. So multiplying that lot out, that's actually negative 12, so that's negative 144. So you've got negative 5 is a negative 144p, having it backwards, or simply p equals, taking it across and divide, 5 over 144. 
So the equation would be, and it says in the form of this, the equation is 5 over 144 x times x minus 24, i.e. it's in the form y equals px x plus 12. I know it seems a bit of a pest time to write this out, just to be formal, just in case just because I need to state the values of P and Q, where P equals 5 over 144, and Q, notice it says plus Q, so Q would be negative 24. Yeah, that was that question. Right, question 12. Simplify this expression, putting it into this form. So we're a, B and C are whole numbers. So somehow I've got to get a whole number coming out. And B and C are whole numbers, no mentions of E's. The E's are going to go, but that's quite easy. Because you know that log base E of E, saying what power of E gives you E, it's E to the power, what that whole thing comes to 1. So if I get a log E of E, that'll give me 1. I'll take care of some of them. Well, best thing to do is put it in and split them up. So that's log e of 2e to the power 3 minus log e of 3e squared. And then rather than divide them, I'll split them up once I've got the two parts. 2e all to the power 3 means I've got log of 2 to the power 3, which is 8, times e cubed minus log e of 3 to the power 2, which is 9, e squared. Then I'll split these numbers separately, because if I've got the log of a product, I can make it into a sum. So that's going to be log e of 8 plus log e of e cubed. Let's keep it right. And there's another product. That's log e of 9 plus log e, oh, I need the e small, of e squared. But that's being subtracted. That's split into two parts. One thing was being subtracted, it became two. Both of them need to be subtracted. And then that seems to be fine because there I've got a log e of 8. Log e of e to the power 3 is 3 because it says what power of e is e to the power 3. A bit obvious. Minus log e of 9, minus this as well. And that also says log e of e squared must be power 2. What power of e is e to the power 2? Just, just said it, so that's 2. So altogether then I've got, for the numbers, 3 take away 2 is 1. And then I've got a log e of 8, I'll keep that bit happy, minus a log e of 9, subtracting, and that'll keep that bit happy. But, does it say state the values? It says it express it in that form. I never like it when it does that. I always tend to just spend the extra bit of time and just write it down and say, well that is in the form of a plus log e of b minus log e of c where, and I know that probably does for that because it didn't say stating the values of a, b and c, but just in case where a is 1, b is 8 and c is the 9. And that was our question. No more circles, logs, there's logs and exponentials. Well, they belong to the same family. So sketch the graph of y equals a to the x plus 1 where a is greater than 2. So I've sketched y equals a to the x. I did it for 3, just roughly. You should know that whatever a is, power 0, because it's going to give 1. If I made that a 3, 3 to the 1, I tried to make that go up 3, which means 1 back would only be about a third. So I just drew that in roughly. Now, a to the x plus 1, the 1's been added after the function's been calculated. You're changing the answers by one. So if those are this picture of the original answers, your new answers are going to go up one. They're going to pass here. So it's just a case of trying to replicate that. Notice the distances. There's not parallel curves. As they get steeper, they get apparently get closer together. I don't know if I can draw that quite accurately enough. It was something like that. Y equals a to the x plus one. And it says, now draw the graph of, how well did I do? Ah, it wasn't too bad. Uh, now draw the graph of y equals a to the x plus 1. So 1's been added to x before it's been evaluated. This doesn't change the answers. It changes the positions of the answers. So x plus 1 
means it's going to shift back, it's the inverse of that. You look for the answers one more and bring them back to plot them where you want them. So all shifts back one, so it's going to end up, have I got this sort of marked roughly, one's about there, it's going to shift back and go something like this. Notice it crosses higher than that one and cuts there. Just in case I try and draw that approximately. So it's going to come down, cut higher, and then cross. It was something like that. So there's y equals a to the x plus 1. They're not very well distinguished from each other. So I'm going to put putting these in red. Ooh, there's that one. And if I had a different colour, I'd have put that in a different colour. That'd have been nice. Right, now the next part. Prove the graphs intersect at a point. Well, here's the point of intersection here. Prove that the graphs intersect at a point where the x coordinate is this thing. Right, it's an intersection. Intersect. Well, intersect means substitute one equation into the other. So that I've got a to the x plus 1 will be the same as a to the x plus 1. Well, it's just a case of solving that. How can I get x? We'll need to get the x's together somehow. Well, bring these both over to the same side. That would be a start. a to the x plus 1 minus a to the x would equal 1. Now, common factors a to the x plus 1 means a to the x times another a. So there's one more factor. So I could take out a factor of a to the x. They both say a to the x. That would leave one more a to make that into plus 1. And I've got all of that, so it's just minus 1. So that equals 1. Now, it's not a that I'm trying to find. So I'm not going to do anything with trying to say, oh, it equals 1. You can't solve equations equal to 1 anyway for factorizations. Well, it's x I want, and there's only one mention of x, so I can find it. Get rid of this, get rid of that. Right, so I've got a to the x would be get rid of this multiplying part. It'll go across and divide. Now, how do I get rid of this a to the power? How do I get rid of an exponential? Log. The opposite of a to the power something is log base a of that something. And that is precisely what you had to demonstrate. There's the point of intersection.